Good afternoon, I'm Professor Mario Moraes and welcome back to Amis for Management. So today I'll be talking about a very known tool called Five Forces of Porter that was created in the 70s by Michael Porter. That's a very known author in business and strategy fields. So first thing, as this is a macro tool that actually analyzes the environment of the company, is to define the industry. So where are you competing in terms of the industry? And with that, you can define the scope, okay? A very quick example, the, the auto industry, you can define it as any auto. So you come from the low cost to very expensive and the scope is large, or you can actually make it very clear. No, my industry is actually the medium tier auto. So I'll leave the low cost and the premium aside. Now, going to the second step that we have to do is analyze each force. So let's start with that. First force, threat of new entrants. Here we measure how easy or hard is to enter and exit this industry. Okay, that will actually make us think about the movement that can have from companies going inside and outside. Second part is bargaining power of buyers. So how much can the buyers influence the industry in terms of asking for better price or better features or actually switching and creating some pressure? On the other side, we have the bargaining power of suppliers. Again, how much can the suppliers actually influence our industry? They can put higher prices or conditions, or they can actually do forward integration and come into the, the industry. Then we have the threat of substitutes and the rivalry, that's the competition. Now, these two are kind of related in the sense that with the definition of the industry, you can measure which one is what. So substitutes are the products that actually fulfill the same need, but they are not the same product. And let me give you a quick example. If you are talking about mass market shampoos, other brands of shampoo actually are not substitutes, they are competition. Now soap or any other kind of product to wash your hair is actually a substitute. So here it's how many and how good are the substitutes for the client. Then the competition is the last force. And it's very important to understand that a competitive market, it's not the one that has more companies, okay? It depends on the size and the level of competition. Meaning I can have a market with two companies that's not competitive because one has most of the market share, the other is small. Or I can have a market with two companies that is highly competitive because both have 50%, okay? It's very fierce, the competition. The same goes for a market with 100 companies. It can be without competition because there is a monopoly that has 99% and the rest of the companies divide the rest, okay? So having this, we will classify each force with high, low, or medium, okay? And the combination of these five classifications will result in the attractiveness of the market. So if the forces actually make it hard for you to compete in the industry, it's a non-attractive market, and the opposite is also true. Now, being in a non-attractive industry doesn't mean that you cannot make a profit, okay? You can actually make a profit in markets that are not attractive. One very known case is the airline industry, that's not attractive, okay? But companies like Ryanair manage to make huge profits. Why? Because they plan to work with the forces. So they understand the driving forces and they make a plan where they diminish the bargaining power of buyers or they actually manage suppliers so they can have better costs and they manage also the competition. So the aim of this tool is for you to look at the environment of your industry and try to understand how can you gain advantage in each force so you can be more competitive and achieve your goal. Thank you very much and see you soon.